Well, hello and welcome to the Terry Cole Show. If you're new to this crew, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I'm a relationship expert and the founder of Boundary Bootcamp and Real Love Revolution. And I'm also the author of a book coming out in April of 2021 called Boundary Boss, The Essential Guide to Talk True, Be Seen, and Finally Live Free. Welcome to the show. So in this show, we're going to be talking about psychological defense mechanisms because we hear a lot about this in out in the world of people being in denial of things or someone projecting or displaced aggression or there's a whole bunch of um, terminology that's out there but I think that it would be really good for you to know what they are and why we what what is the purpose of defense mechanisms and the reason why I think it's important that you know what ones you have a tendency to use is because sometimes if we're overusing them unknowingly because a lot of this stuff is unconscious it really gets in the way of our ability to make healthy relationships or draw appropriate boundaries so you really want to know yourself and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you because psychological defense mechanisms, sometimes called ego defense mechanisms um Everyone uses them because your brain is organized a particular way to protect you from pain. So it's a way that we separate ourselves from uncomfortable feelings, thoughts, events. Um, They put space between us and things that are uncomfortable or straight up painful. So don't mind me as I drink my tea. if we get to the basis of it, which I won't go into all of it, but you know, it basically stemmed from Freud's psychoanalytic theory. So this is who first proposed it. There are lots and lots and lots of therapists and psychologists and Freud's daughter, Anna Freud, actually then took the ball and ran with it and added a whole bunch of other defense mechanisms. But in this episode, I'm just gonna be covering the um, most common ones so so that you actually the ones that you would probably use the most and I did create a um, a little guide for you and I'll give you examples in the guide so it is um, terrycole.com forward slash 264 is what we are looking for that is this is the 264th episode of this show so let's get the show on the road shall we and let's talk about the most common defense mechanisms. Well, the first one uh, is denial, right? You've ever heard, you know, denial, it's not just a river in Egypt. So this occurs when you are refusing to accept the facts or reality, blocking out, um, especially with a lot that's been going on in the world lately. I think that a lot of us are using this as a way to protect ourselves And I don't know if it's straight up denial because personally, I'm not refusing to accept it. I'm just not subjecting myself to watching the nightly news. I would prefer to read my news so it's not as traumatizing because every day there seems to be something else that is traumatizing. But it's most, um, it, it means you're avoiding something that you're actually blocking out the truth of something. You are not accepting the facts. And of course that can be dangerous because facts are facts and you not accepting them doesn't change them as facts. Um, Repression is the next one we'll talk about, which is thoughts, um, painful or unsavory thoughts, uh, painful memories, irrational beliefs that can be upsetting. So instead of facing them or thinking about them, it's sort of like they get pushed down in your mind. So it's like we're pushing them into the basement, which is like the unconscious mind. So it doesn't mean, of course, that those things disappear. It means that we really don't want to feel or think about them. The problem with repression is that they're still there and the energy of those things might be um, impacting your other behavior or the way you're relating to people in a way that you are unaware of because you're pushing it down. All right, what is projection? That is number three. Um, 
some thoughts and feelings. Let's just say, I mean, the easiest way to describe projection is someone new comes into work and you do not like that person, but you feel bad that you're judging that person. So instead of saying, I don't like Sally, the new person, you say, I think Sally hates me. I don't know why Sally hates me, but Sally hates me. So you, we actually experience feelings that we don't want to have, that we are disavowing, so to speak. And we are, instead of experiencing them coming from us, we experience them as coming at us from the other person. And I know that sounds crazy, but you would be shocked as to how often this happens, where you have no reason to think that that person doesn't like you. But the truth is you don't like them and you don't want to admit it because it makes you feel like a bad person. Okay, um, what is displacement? A typical displacement is, you know, getting angry with your partner because you had a crappy day at work, right? So some, you come home frustrated, you sat in traffic and then you yell at your partner and, you know, are like rough or, or, or really um, short with your kid. That is where you're displacing your frustration or your aggression on one person to another. And you can also do it on inanimate objects. You might have lots of frustration about something else and then you can't get the hose out of the thing and you're like, scream and kick the hose. That is also displacement. Um, okay, number five is regression. So what about regression? <sighs> aggression is a way of escaping to an earlier phase of development. That's the way that Freud would describe it. So when you're going through, you know, it's obvious when you have kids, right? If you have a kid, and then you have another kid, sometimes the older child will regress. And maybe if they were already potty trained, they'll start wetting the bed um, because they don't want to be replaced or they feel threatened by the new baby. So that's one way, but adults can also regress. So you might be in a very stressful situation and maybe watching sitcoms was very soothing to you when you were younger or in middle school and you may find yourself watching tons of sitcoms to soothe yourself, or why we talk about comfort food, right? You, food from childhood that was soothing, when you're in a really stressful situation, you may now start eating that to soothe the way that you're feeling. Um, that is regression. Um, rationalization, so some people may attempt to explain undesirable behaviors by making up their own facts, right? Um, this allows them to feel comfortable um, with the choices that they've made, even though somewhere down deep, they know that they're full of crap. So it's, it's rationalizing it, but it's almost rationalizing something to yourself. So, um, and, and it's also denying, you're rationalizing your own behavior. So let's say you're someone who is always late to meetings, but for whatever reason, this other person, when they're late to the meeting, you go off on them, you're angry at them. You're, you are literally in your own mind, rationalizing your own lateness and just focusing on their lateness. So that's rationalization. Sublimation is actually, that, that's number seven. And that's one that can actually be considered positive where you may have drives that are considered unacceptable to you. Maybe you have a bit of a sadistic streak, which is kind of getting pleasure from inflicting pain on other people. But if you become a dentist, or someone who, by the sheer nature of your work, you'll be inflicting at least some pain on people, that is sublimation. So instead of becoming someone who is abusive to others, you sublimate that drive into a career where you can still get that satisfaction, but it's respectable. Make sense? Okay, reaction formation, this one's a little confusing. Um, but it's basically, people use this defense mechanism when they can't handle how they really feel. So let's just say you really dislike someone. Instead of treating them that way by being avoiding them or whatever, you go out of your way to be super nice to them. So it's basically, um, you have a belief that, that expressing your negative feelings is wrong and bad. So you're almost denying it. So you act the opposite of what that is. And this is can also be way more complicated uh, reaction formation because if someone uh, feels a desire towards the same sex, but they don't identify as same sex loving, 
in reaction formation will e can either have you then be very um, biased against same-sex um, loving people, that's one way, or building up your your um, macho-ness to prove that you're not same-sex loving. You may go out of your way, if this happens to a man, you may go out of your way to have a lot of sex with a lot of women to prove and that is reaction formation. Like you cannot handle what is true. So you are proving it to yourself and to other people, but it's not true. It's just a way that your mind is organizing that information so that you don't have to deal with it. Okay, compartmentalization, separating your life into independent sectors, right? Like having, do you, do you know people like this when you choose not to discuss um, personal stuff at work or not to discuss work at home. Now, I'm not saying if you're a private person, you don't you don't have to um, discuss personal stuff at work, really personal stuff. But when you're compartmentalizing, it's like you don't want to discuss it at all, right? It's like that's in a box there, that's in a box there. So it's almost like you're compartmentalizing your own personality to keep things easy. It's like to, to not do this, but it's a way also when you use this too often, it's like not having an integrated life experience because it's like just with these people, just with that person. Uh, uh, uh. And that, you know, we play different roles when we do a lot of compartmentalizing. And the last one that I'm going to talk about is intellectualization. So this is where um, you're in an emotional situation, but you use your mind to not feel the feelings, right? It's removing emotions from your responses. So if someone passes away, intellectualization might be like, well, this is a fact of life. And now I have plans I need to make. I need to, you know, we're going to have a funeral or, or whatever the thing is. It's a way of avoiding the pain of the loss because you're now doing it here. Intellectualization is moving the experience into your mind and out of your body. So um, I'm curious to know what you think about these ego defense mechanisms. Have you heard of them before? Where do you see yourself? Make sure that you download terrycole.com forward slash 264 this episode so you can actually get the cheat sheet with um, some little examples in there. I would love to hear what you think about it. So please let me know. And if you liked it, obviously drop your comments here, but also share it with the people in your life. If you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, hello, do it now. What are you waiting for? Um, and I want to know what you think about this. I hope you guys have an amazing week. And as always, take care of you.